And we'll move on to the only uh, item on the agenda tonight. Um, <coughs> and for this and every item, what we'll ask is first for the applicant to present a brief description of the nature of the request or the application. The board would have an opportunity to ask questions first, then we would open it up to any members of the public who may be present to also have a chance to ask questions. We ask that anyone who speaks identify him or herself by name and address for the record that Carolyn keeps, and, uh, and that all questions uh, from the public be addressed to the board, not to each other or to the applicant, so that the board can sort of maintain some control over the proceedings and, uh, and uh, um, but everybody will have an opportunity to, uh, to speak if they, if they want to. So the item on the agenda tonight is for a request for a dimensional variance to convert a principal structure from a garage to a residence uh, submitted by Sheila Moose. Um, uh, on Marshall Street in Northampton, Assessor's Map ID 25A-029. Notice of this hearing was published uh, on December 29th and January 5th. And uh, we'll go ahead and ask the applicant or her representative to speak. Uh, up there? Uh, it, you know, either way, it, it should be at the podium. Okay. Uh, all right. Hi, I'm Sheila Most, and uh, my husband Stephen, and um, I've lived in Northampton on Marshall Street for all of my life, just about uh, 16 Marshall. And we're asking um, the board for a variance. We have a structure on Marshall across the street from our primary residence, uh, and it's located. Um, it, it, it butts up to Route 91. Um, and there's a chain link fence that runs behind the garage property and it's four feet from the corner of the building. The, the fence is angled oddly so the one corner of the building is four feet from that fence and that's what we're asking for a variance on that four feet. Right from the normal 20 foot rear setback requirement. Okay, right. yes. Okay, um, and is this a property that came to us in the past? Yes, in 2000 and, gosh, I know it's seven. 2007, seven, maybe, yeah. yeah. Yes, and we, we didn't act on it, and I didn't know that it expired. Okay, but we had granted a variance, I think, at that time, yes. but for a different use. No, this, uh, it was the same. The same oh. dimensional variance for that four feet. But, and what were you going to use that structure for? An then? apartment. An apartment, and yes. now it's only Oh, and at that time there might have been a garage as well. Right. And but this time it's no just, longer. the use is just for a garage? No, just for, for an apartment. apartment. Okay. For two apartments. Yeah. For two apartments, okay. Yes. Which, I guess what I'm getting at is, to some extent, before we get into more detail, we've already gone through an analysis of a request for a variance on the same property. And granted That's one. That's true. There's a slightly different configuration because there's a new building being proposed as well on the site, mm -hmm. whereas this is just contained within the existing um, structure. But you right. did the analysis at the time of the uniqueness to the property and right. the hardship and the um, and sh you know the question about whether it was not a self-imposed hardship or it was detrimental to the public good or would it derogate from the Right. Intent of the ordinance, so all of those questions um, were reviewed at that time. It is a slightly different application. Um, I think it was for one unit, not two. At the last time, I don't. At that time, it was the just, time you could only have one at that time. At, at that time, it was one unit versus mm -hmm. now it's two. The zoning has changed to allow more units. Um, um, has a different ratio of units to lot size, so it changes the number of units that are allowed anywhere in the city, and so that um, right. affects this parcel as well as right. other parcels. And the reason I remember it is because, well, one, because Carolyn reminded me of it, but, but two, because um, it's so rare that we grant a variance, and the, the, the interesting background here is that we already did grant a variance on the exact same Parcel. I realize it was a different application, slightly different circumstances for new construction and so on. But, but, um, but my recollection is that is that this the, the variance is considered an extraordinary remedy that we're virtually never supposed to uh, allow under case law because it has the effect of undermining the whole purpose of the zoning ordinance. The zoning ordinance 
lays out restrictions on use and lots and structures and dimensions. Uh -huh. um, and the whole idea of a variance looks a lot like a special exception mm -hmm. giving one, one property owner special treatment. And so the law does not favor that. And as a result, under the case law, there's a whole list of criteria that have to be satisfied that are extremely difficult to satisfy. And that's why I remember it, mm -hmm. because you did satisfy it last time. Uh -huh. Was this before your time? It was before my yeah. time. I see, the yeah. you know, I see the reference to having gotten the proper one. But it's the same um, building square footage, yeah. right? And you know, I, I mean, there's the overriding piece, poli you know, public policy piece to these conditions to a right. to denying the variance, which is, you know, the benefit to the neighborhood, to the housing right. stock, to a right. lot of other things, which is probably why you granted it in the past. Right. That's where I'm going with this. Yeah. That, that uh, last time you met these very difficult criteria and and and, and much of this, I, I realize you're using existing buildings, not new construction, but most of the circumstances as I re uh, read this are essentially the same, uh -huh. so, which is, that's good. <laughs> that's all good. Uh, but, but are there questions from the board members about uh, Well, I just wanted to clarify. I, I went back and, uh, and, and read through that and what was uh, available online. Uh, so the zoning, our, z our zoning has changed as far as number of units and that sort of thing, but um, is there any, um, you would know better than any of us, um, I, I guess about the case law that that has changed um, the uh, inclination toward allowing it that would apply to any of these criteria that we already evaluated? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think, I mean, I, can't cite you anything in particular that comes, you know, has come in the last seven years. Um, um, generally, I mean, there have been some decisions affecting um, what constitutes a variance request versus a finding, um, which is probably the biggest shift in the in the mm -hmm. um, in the law, and that that then was reflected in a zoning change that was made for the city about. Um, when someone requests an expansion um, where there's a condition of a nonconformity already, um, instead of triggering a variance, it's triggering, um, you know, finding, which is a lower level threshold. That's what but I was that's thinking about. It seems, um, it seems like less of a threshold now when I just look at the dimensions and, uh, and the units. Yeah, I think the issue here is there's a dim dimensional compliance already. So from that perspective, there's not a, con a nonconformity with the dimension. There is a nonconformance with the use because we don't allow standalone storage in a residential district. Um, it has to be accessory to a residential use. So it's a little bit different in that the site as it sits and dimensionally Compliance, but not the use. Thank you. Yep. But but they're actually bringing us more into compliance by converting right. from storage use to right. residential right. use, which is a positive. Right. Just out of curiosity, I don't remember the year that there was the taking to um, in the put in 60s, 91. Maybe. Probably in the 60s. remember when that was? Oh, it was, it was back in the 60s. 91, Route 91 opened in uh, 64, 65, so it was well before that. Um, I think that document I sent was 1961, was the taking. I emailed the document um, of the... In November 6, 1962 is, is the, the plan. Oh, the, this yeah. One, yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't see the date on here. November 62. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, looks bigger. it looks bigger on the screen. <laughs> Not much on my little computer. Which is part of what created the uniqueness of the lot completely outside of control of the home, the owner, which is one of the criteria. Um, it wasn't something the owner created, it was created by outside forces. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty comfortable at this point, given that we've done this once before, and that um, 
not only does it meet the criteria, but it also satisfies some other needs of the city um, on a variety of levels. So um, I think the only concern that we saw um, had to do with the curb opening, Carolyn, is that? Oh, uh, right. Is that it? Okay. So are you familiar with what I was just referring the 15, to? Yeah, yeah just yeah, reducing see, the yeah, maximum width of yes. the curb. And I tried to get that in there, but, but for the computer, right. it was quite a task to get it on. Let me tell you. So yes. if we made that a contingency, that would not present a problem no, for our plans? No, no. Okay. Well, I, I don't have any other questions. Any members of the public here to address this application? No? Okay. Uh, seeing none. Um, Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Part. Yep. Second. All Second. in favor, unanimous. Okay. Um, the, I don't know if it's necessary for the record to itemize um, how we feel that each of the it is because it's, it's a variant. Because it's a variant. Yeah. So, so maybe I'll try to do that very quickly before we have a motion on the on the application, um, and then we can just as part of the motion say you know <coughs> having having found yeah. Should have noted that. Yeah. Okay. So so um, I would suggest that we've already talked about the unique going down the list of seven criteria to allow a variance that courts would scrutinize. Um, the uniqueness, the unique circumstances affecting only this property or structure, and that is a unique lot created by the taking by the state of, of land for I-91, something beyond the control of the, the property owner, which is relevant, I think. Um, that there'd be a hardship from literal enforcement of the zoning, um, that uh, no other reasonable use of the property exists. Uh, now we know that there's a storage facility there, but that's actually not allowed by zoning. Um, and it's not self-imposed, um, meaning you didn't create the problem uh, because of this unusual shape and, and geographic area of the lot. It not be a detriment to the public good, and I would suggest that by converting to uh, permitted use residential, it actually enhances the public good versus being a detriment to the public good if we grant this and not derogate from the intent of zoning. I think same idea. It's uh, converting to a use that's not only allowed but uh, by the zoning ordinance in that zoning district, but it's it, it encouraged um, in terms of infill and so on, correct? Yep. And that the, it's the least variance that would afford relief. Um, and it's, I, I would suggest that's the case because it's reusing or repurposing the existing structure and not changing any footprints and, mm -hmm. and so on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, anyone want to add anything to that? Or, um, the condition of the 15 foot. Right, which right. could be a part, yeah, that, that we, we would want, in order to ensure that there's no detriment to the public good, which is one of the certain criteria, uh, I think what we will propose is a motion that requires a condition that the uh, curb cut will be closed to the extent necessary to comply with a 15 foot width maximum mm -hmm. in, in required by the city. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's nothing else, maybe a mo motion on the application. Sure, um, I move to approve the applicant's uh, request for a variance for the property at 16 Marshall Street to create a two unit uh, apartment structure um, as set out in the application based on the fact that it meets all the criteria for the variance. Um, and the one condition would be the creation of the curb opening to no more than 15. Second. Uh, all in favor, that's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. Good luck with the project. Yes. Thank you. May I ask now what the next step is so that I sure. <laughs> So I need to write up the decision and give it to the clerk. The clerk will, um, then that will um, start a 20-day, excuse me, appeal period. And then after, at the end of the appeal period, you'll get a copy of the decision in the mail. At the end of the appeal period, you'll be able to pick up uh, a certified copy from the clerk indicating that no appeals were taken. And then you can record that decision again at the Registry of Deeds, at which point you have one year to start 
Yeah. Okay. Great. Not complete, but start. Start. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we have nothing else on the agenda. We do have some minutes from December 8th. I sent those, right? Yep. Okay. And I had a question because I think this page might come from a. Are you ready? I have to go to the link now. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's probably Okay, sorry happen. about that. So I'll delete so, the last page. So I guess we just need a motion to approve the December 8th minutes with the uh, deletion of the third page because that was a carryover from a prior yeah. night. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? That's unanimous. And any other business or motion to adjourn? Second. That's it. So motion to adjourn. Second. Or who, who moved? I did. Okay. Is there a second? All in favor, you know. Hi.